Okay, now that we have something, something a little bit cleaner to work with, uh, let's keep on waiting some other areas of this model. And I'm going to proceed with uh, the hands of the character just because it's an area that is easy to isolate. So I'm just going to go ahead and hide the neck and head hierarchy and unhide the right arm hierarchy. So there you have it. And for this part of the character, you really want to make sure that symmetry is set to off because we were using symmetry before on the face of the character so that we could just weight vertices on one side and the opposite side would be weighted at the same time. But if you selected some vertices on this hand and you had symmetry off, that would select the opposing vertices on the other side of the character. And since we're going to be weighting to a joint that is on one side of the character, uh, you don't want to have the vertices on the opposing side to be weighted to that joint. So be careful about that. So let's get started. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is, again, create a little animation for this guy here. First, I'm just going to examine what's going on by rotating it myself. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of movement right there on the forearm area, which makes things look kind of rubbery. So we're going to get rid of that. Uh, let's create a keyframe right there and then let's move this up and uh, did I create the keyframe? Oh, sure. I created a keyframe on position. So let me undo that. All right, that's better. So now go up and then down and then back to zero. So let's see what's uh, going on in this area of our mesh. And first I'm going to select the hand um, joint that is uh, deforming our mesh. So uh, since I can't see it because I, I have overlay off, I just selected any of the finger joints and just find them here in the uh, items list. And here's my hand joint you can see it right there so it's probably having effect on this area which I don't want it to so let's go ahead and select our mesh and go to ed edge um, component mode and I'm just gonna select a few of these edge loops all the way over to here and uh, let's uh, see what weights we have so over here we have 0%, which is great. We just have some weights here, which we don't want. So let's bring those to 0. And let's scrub again our time slider. And as you can see, it's improved. But there's still some movement right there, which means that there is um, another joint affecting these edges. And it's going to be very likely either the thumb or the uh, pinky because those two fingers have joints that go all the way close to this area. The rest of the, of the fingers, uh, they have their joints starting at the knuckles. So let's select, for example, our thumb root. And let's see what this guy has in terms of weights. Uh, yes, we can see some weights right there. Let's bring those down to zero and immediately things change. And let's uh, check out the uh, pinky root. And it also has some small weights on the first loop. And that gets rid of them. So let's scrub again. That first loop is still moving. So what we can do is uh, what we did before. Let's select that loop, convert that to a vertex selection, and let's bring up our data lists palette. Well, actually not data lists, it's the uh, utility palette. 
and see uh, here which uh, which weight maps are affecting those vertices. So we have uh, the hand, which is now down to zero. Uh, zero, zero here. It starts to get a little bit interesting. The lower arm twist, but that's fine. We want these guys to be uh, influenced by the by anything related to the arm. And then another lower arm twist. And it uh, looks like that's it. So it appears to be only the lower arm twist joints that are affecting them. And let's see if we turn overlay drawing off, if we can see some movement on the forearm area. We don't. So let's continue working on the fingers and we'll come back to this guy shortly after because there's apparently nothing else affecting uh, those vertices and the lower arm twist joints which are not moving apparently but we'll see about that later. So. Um, I'm going to show you how I go about uh, weighting, for example, fingers. These these tend to be a not very difficult area to work on. And again, I'm going to just create a little animation for them. So I'm going to select all my finger controls and uh, give them A rotation in Z keyframe and then just curl the finger like so I want to see a nice bend happening right there and um, probably for this guy it's a little bit too much so let's bring it back a touch and that's it Let's leave it at that. Let's hide this palette. Very well. Let me turn off overlay drawing again. And let's get started with waiting this part. Okay, so let's see what we have. So the first thing I notice is loss of volume. As you can see, as the finger curls, it sort of gets thinner, which probably means, well, not probably, which means basically that the uh, weights on this area are way too smoothed out. So if we select our joints, you can see that uh, as I select them, we have this smoothed area over here and here. So I'm going to reduce the smoothing by adding more weight to, uh, to some of these joints. So let's expand here the hierarchy. I'm going to select my first joint and the mesh and go into edge component mode and select, for example, this loop. Uh, this one I definitely want weighted 100% towards the first joint. So let's use our adjust weights tool and increase that. And as you can see, we recover the volume that the, uh, the finger has originally although that looks kind of weird. Uh, we're going to work on that in a second. So now I'm going to select this other set of edges that go around the base of the finger and also increase the weight on those. That's better. Now I'm going to select these two points on the knuckle and reduce the weight for those so we can retain a little bit more of the original shape of the knuckle and not see it smooth out as much as you can see this this gives us again this nice edge that the knuckle has okay 
So we're more or less uh, done with the first joint. Let's work on the second one. I know this looks kind of weird, but we're going to take care of that in a second. So I'm going to select the second joint. I'm going to do the same. I'm going to select this loop and weight it 100% towards this joint. And as you can see, we get this funny bulge. And then I'm going to select my last joint and select these loops that belong to the tip of the finger. I'm going to convert that to vertices and I'm just going to select the uh, remaining vertices on the tip of the finger. And we should do this in wireframe so that it's easier to select those vertices. There you go. So now we have everything that belongs to the finger selected. And let's weight those to 100%. Cool. Now we just need to figure out the uh, edges that belong to the parts of the finger where things start to blend. So this one is going to be actually uh, pretty straightforward. I'm just going to figure out what would be the best shape for it. And you can check your own fingers and bend them to uh, figure this one out. So maybe something like that, with the exception of these two vertices right here, because right now uh, I have this shape that is very curved. So let's go back to uh, vertex component mode and just weight these guys so that we get a, a little bit of a sharper corner there and let's scrub obviously um, the model will probably need a couple more edge loops right here to give this area a little bit more definition so you can have a nicer shape but for now this will do now I'm gonna go back and select the first the first joint again and let's uh, Wait, this guy. And this guy over here. So as you can see, it's a little difficult to work with at this extreme pose now that we have some more volume. So I'm just going to go and scrub to a frame where there's a little bit more space so I can see what's going on. And let's uh, select our second joint. And I'm going to select these verts and weight those. So what I'm trying to do here is to uh, preserve as much as possible of the original shape of the finger as it's curling. Maybe a little bit less. So if we look at it from here, that looks better. Uh, there's some movement on some of the uh, hand that is happening as the finger curls, but it's nothing that I would really concern myself with. I'm just going to probably erase some of the weights that are moving points here on the uh, thumb area. But for the hand, that's actually kind of nice because it makes the hand look more natural as the fingers move. You're going to see some movement on the hand, which is something you actually want to do. You will notice that when you move your hand around, uh, the skin, even if you're just moving your fingers, the skin on the hand area, it also moves and stretches because of how skin reacts. Now, I know that the character is using gloves, but still, if you had glo gloves on and you curled your fingers, you would see the, uh, the hand area of your glove also move. So let's uh, leave that in, and I am just going to go back here and erase weights from these two. Uh, 
Well, this is this is a funky loop, so I definitely don't want uh, to remove weight from over here. I just want it removed from the rest of the uh, the thumb, which is these vertices right there. So let's bring those back to zero. And uh, now it should see no movement on the thumb, but still a little bit on this area of the hand. That's that's nice. Um, I could go through the same process for the other fingers, showing you what I'm doing, but I guess you get the idea. Basically, uh, the entire process involves selecting components and adjusting the weights on them. Um, I tend to rely more, more on the adjust weights tool for stuff like this. Uh, that requires more precision than actual painting. Painting, I usually use it uh, for areas that are, are bro broader and uh, for joints that have more influence on a large area. So that works well there, same as smoothing. But for, for something like a hand, I'll probably just go and, and fiddle things by hand, even a vertex at a time if necessary, because uh, uh, that's, that's what it is. That's what uh, waiting is all about. So um, I'm going to leave it at this. Uh, I'm going to come back when I'm done with the uh, rest of the fingers on the hand and probably show you a couple more things that I did. And then we're going to move on to a different uh, part of the character. So I'll see you in a second. Okay, I'm done with the uh, waiting on the hand. So I'm going to give you a quick rundown of what I did and how things are shaping up. So let's find the weight maps for the hand. Here they are. So this is what the area of influence looks like for the hand. As you can see, there's no more influence on the forearm. And um, this is pretty much it. Uh, then we can check out the fingers. This is the index. As I mentioned before, I reduce the weight I have on the uh, tip of the knuckles so that uh, I get a better shape here. Uh, same thing here, you can see there's less influence at the top of the finger. These are the kind of things that you'll probably need to just experiment with and see what shapes you get. Uh, this guy, I need to correct that. I'm glad I actually uh, saw this. Uh, it's not necessarily really to uh, select the joint that you want to edit the influence for. You can just directly select the weight map and uh, and the mesh and do some additional tweaking if necessary, which I just did in this case. Um, we can keep going. This is more or less what the fingers look like. I'm going to show you the formations in a second. Um, as you can see, I'm having also the first joint on each finger pull a little bit of the skin on top of the hand so that you can get some nice movement there. Then we have this pinky root finger, which is um, pulling a lot of the vertices in this area so you can have a nice uh, shape when you try to cup the hand. Same thing here with the uh, thumb. Also, reducing weights over here for this joint so you can retain the shape. And that's pretty much it. So let me show you what that looks like with uh, with some movement on the hand. And I think I can just hide the um, hierarchy for the arm so we can just focus on the deformations. And I just created a little animation here. So as you can see, uh, one part that you want to keep an eye on always is the inside of the hand so that you can have nice shapes such as this one. Um, so you got to weight uh, these vertices sometimes to some of the movement of the fingers, not just the hand bone. And that's even more apparent uh, when you start to flex the hand like so. You want to have the first joint of each finger move some of the vertices that are in the inside of the hand so you don't have some weird collisions in there. And um, that's pretty much it. Okay, so 
we're done with the hand and I think we could just uh, work our way up to work on the arm of the character and uh, then the rest of the body so let's keep going okay well we are ready to uh, work on the arm of the character but before doing so there's one thing that I noticed um, that I wanted to correct as I went ahead and this is something we're gonna look more into um, later on when we get to start to actually build uh, what what's called the UI of the character the user interface the things that uh, the user will have to interact with to drive the character but uh, I wanted to uh, to take a look at some of that now because it's going to be important. I created this little test animation to test the deformations on the arm of the character. Okay, and one of the things I noticed uh, while I was doing so is that our friend here, the upper arm FK control, looks kind of wobbly as you go from one pose to the next. Like this vertical movement is okay so far. Uh, you then see these arcing motions to go from what should be a linear pose to the next one and you see a little bit wobbling at the end of the keyframes okay so the reason for that is that for this particular uh, control we are using the wrong axis order and that's something that is not going to be obvious when you're working in local uh, transform space because Let's say, let's say I'm at this pose. If I grab this axis and I rotate it, I get to that pose, everything is okay. Then I can go here, everything is fine, and everything looks perfectly normal. And the reason is you're working with the local axis of the, uh, the item itself. But you are not working with the actual rotation axes that are going to be a result of the orders of rotation. If I take out, uh, if I go out of local mode and I actually work with those axes you'll see that as soon as I rotate this up uh, my X and Y axes are not aligned anymore so I cannot rotate this forward on an arc on a single axis that motion is going to be a result of rotating both the Y and X axis and that's why you get that wobbling effect let's see it again see and if I if I go to this frame you will see that my my keyframe values are all uh, different that there's no just two axes that have been rotated to get to this pose so um, that is going to definitely be a problem for the animators because they will never be able to go from pose to pose uh, directly without that problem and it's also going to make their function curves a lot harder to read. So what we need to do is to get an order of rotations that will allow us to do that without too much effort. So in this case, if I move up the arm, the two other axes are not following because the Z axis is the first axis in the order of rotation and therefore is the last one to be evaluated. So if I want these guys to follow along with that rotation, I need the z-axis to be evaluated first, which means to uh, it has to be placed at the last position in the order of rotations. So let's change these to x, y, z, for example. And now, when I rotate my uh, control on the z-axis, the other two axes come along. And then I can rotate forward, and x will come along too, and then I can rotate this like so and everything is going to be perfect. So in this case, I need this particular control to use an XYZ order of rotation, okay? That's what I need to see over here. And I'm gonna be able to do those motions a lot better. I'm gonna correct them in a second. But for now, I just wanted to point this out. Uh, again, as I said, oh, we're gonna review this uh, as, as we start to build the UI of the character to make sure every control has the correct uh, order of rotations. I just happened to notice this one, uh, so I fixed it for this for this control. And you might want to probably do it on the other arm too, uh, because well we're there, so um, that we can get some nice uh, motion tests for our deformations 
uh, a lot easier. So I just wanted to point this out. And now we can actually move on to start working on the weighting of the arm. Okay, I've uh, corrected the motion test I had with the new order of rotations. And as you can see, we get much cleaner motion, no wobbling, and the proper F curves being generated. For example, for this particular pose, only these two axes have keyframe, uh, well, values different than zero in them, which is the two axes that you need to rotate to get to this position. So everything is looking good. Now let's um, analyze a little bit what's going on with the deformations of the character. So the first thing you'll notice is that as I move his arm, a lot of the chest is moving, way more than it should. Okay, so we're going to have to work there. As you can see, a lot of the uh, chest there is being pulled by the, uh, the arm. So we're going to have to reduce the influence of the arm on this area. And for the uh, upper arm, we can see that this area also needs some work. The elbow is getting rounded out quite a bit. We need the elbow to stay more rigid to have here a better angle on it and uh, also work a little bit on this part and when it comes to this twist and the upper arm uh, we can see that a lot of this area is being pulled a lot more than uh, we would like to have so we need to work on, on this part too. And then I'm thinking there's probably uh, something else going on there than just waiting a waiting problem. Um, and lastly, I guess we forgot to take a look at the forearm twisting. So we can do a little animation for that right now. I'm just going to add a few keyframes here and rotate that like so and uh, return that to zero and we can see the forearm twist right there okay so let's get started with uh, with our character and the first thing I want to look at is is this part here with the rotation that we saw over there because uh, as I said I suspect there's something else going on here and I want to take a look at that before I start working on the weights of the mesh because uh, if there's another problem and I have already reweighted this when I fix the problem the weights might not be right anymore and I would have to reweight it again so as you know we're using these guys the squares as our actual constraint for the twist of the uh, of the arm and I can see that my first two deformers here are actually following their constraints pretty well which seem with uh, which add up to more rotation as you approach the elbow and over here we should see almost nothing which is not the case right now so let's see what's going on with this particular deformer right there let's uh, I need to get some clear space to select it there we go and this is the area it's influencing and as you can see there's a lot of torso vertices right there. We're going to get to that in a second. Let's find that in the uh, skeleton deformation hierarchy. And uh, I'm going to select its dynamic parenting node and select the input items to see what is dynamically parented to. And this appears to be the problem. Um, I, I constrain it to the wrong object. I don't want to constrain it to this object because this one is always going to be twisting. I want to constrain it to its little square over here, which is not what was done. So let's fix that. I'm going to go back to frame zero. And uh, this is the object that we actually needed to constrain to. Okay. So I'm going to go into setup mode. We need to do all these things in setup mode. Reselect the deformer, which is this guy right here. We're going to delete the dynamic parenting right under it and then select it again. And now we can shift select and uh, 
add the correct parent. Remember to have compensation on. You don't want to not have it. So let's go out of setup mode and see what we get now when we get to that pose. Well, all the rest is deforming fine. And when we get to the twist, that's a lot better, as you can see. OK, that's much better. Now, we should probably have a little bit of twist on this guy, uh, on the, the square, so that it's not entirely static. But that's more of a rigging problem, not a deformations problem. So I'm going to leave that alone for, alone for now. And uh, we're going to come back at it when we go into the uh, debugging face of the rig right at the end uh, after the formations are done. And the reason is, as you've probably noticed by now, being having a deforming mesh uh, gives us a lot more accurate visual feedback on what's going on with the rig. So the only thing I'm going to do for now is fix it on the other side if the problem is also present there. So let's unhide the left arm hierarchy. Oh. This is the leg. There you go. And let's select the same deformer on this side. Let's find it over here. Oh, he's up there. And uh, select its dynamic parent. Select the input items. Yeah, same thing. He's parented to the bone. Uh, I mean, to the joint that we have right here. So we don't want that. Let's select that dynamic parent delete it and now select the uh, correct one and add that as our parent and now everything should be okay for that side too all right so let's uh, keep moving and now let's actually work in the deformation so I'm gonna select again um, my deformer my deforming joint and the mesh. And let's see what we have. Okay, that's a, that's a lot of movement. I'm gonna go to the frame where the arm is extended more or less like so, and work on this area right here. So let's go to our waiting tab. And um, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a scale down brush because I want to scale down these values uh, before actually erasing them. We're going to work with the scale down and the erase brush um, because if I erase them right now I might get too hard a transition on the remaining vertices and uh, then I would have to go and smooth things out. There, there's actually not a right way to do this. You can you can do that. You can just erase and then paint back some values if you feel they're missing or just use the smoothing brush. Um, in my case I'm just going to go and use the scale down brush first Let's increase uh, its effect and uh, resize it and just start painting over here. And as you can see, we get a little bit less values over here. Um, if you see the mesh jump back to its uh, setup state from time to time, don't be too concerned. It's uh, sometimes doing that. Uh, another thing that you might notice is uh, in certain meshes, and this guy's not even that complex in terms of topology, if you're working with really dense meshes, the brush might feel sluggish. So one thing you can do is turn off live deformers. And what that's going to do is, uh, as you paint, uh, when live deformers is on, the vertex waves are recomputed on the fly as you paint your brush stroke over them, and that's why it's feeling sluggish. If you turn it off, then what happens is, um, the vertex weights are computed after you release the mouse button. So that's going to enable you to do much faster brush strokes as you see here. And then when you release the mouse, you'll see the mesh update. So I'm just going to go ahead and continue that way, which is going to be a lot faster. And uh, we can switch to the VMAP display mode. Better see what's going on here. And let's make this brush smaller to work in this area. And then I'm going to go and select the erase brush and just 
erase any values that we have on this part of the torso. Erase will just take them back to zero. That looks good. I still see a lot of pull right there, which means there's very likely another um, joint influencing that area. But for now, looks like we've gotten this joint as far as it'll go in terms of uh, its influence. So let's now select a different joint. Okay, let's select this guy over here. And as you can see, this guy is also influencing vertices down there, which we definitely don't want. So I'm just going to go and erase these straight away. Oops. I erased some of the underarm. You got to be uh, careful with the uh, fall off area of the brush. Okay. Yeah, that's much, much better. Let's make sure nothing else here on the back gets pulled. by that particular joint. Okay, so let's uh, scrub once more. As I said, that happens sometimes. The mesh goes kind of crazy. So all you have is to select it, deselect it again, and scrub again. And usually that refreshes properly. So as you can see, we fixed the problem here on the torso. There's no more weird pulling over there. We might have, uh, let's go back to GL. Uh, we might have being a little bit too drastic with this area. So I could definitely add more influence from here to these vertices to see some pull, but that's just going to stretch things. As you can see, they're stretching right there. Um, and that's not what I want. So what I'm going to do, well, what we are going to do is later on, we're going to add um, more extra joints to the system that will simulate uh, bones and muscle in the torso area of the character so that we can get a lot, <clears throat> a much better deformation over there. For now, I'm just going to worry about the, uh, the arms. So let's go and take this position, for example, this, this pose. And now I'm going to work on the forearm of the character so that I can correct this elbow shape. So let's select, shift select our deforming joint right there. And um, let's select some vertices, this guy and this guy, and adjust the weight on those. So these guys need to be a lot less influenced by that joint so they keep they retain this more of an angle right there and as you've seen we also need to do these two other vertices right there because they're being influenced a lot and we need to reduce that quite a bit I'm just gonna leave a little bit of weight so that we see a little bit of movement on this part of the arm and now I need to get rid of this curve here a little bit by reducing the weight on the uh, two adjacent vertices to the ones I just reweighted. So let's take them back to zero and then back up a little bit. Not much. And now I'm going to make sure no other vertices up the arm have any weight from that joint as you can see they there was some weight right there we just bring those back to zero and we're looking good I'm going to also go back to this vertex and this one right here and also edit the weight on those to be a lot less so I can uh, have a better shape in those 
edges. And I think this does it for this part of the uh, of the character. Let's see how that looks as it moves. That's a much better elbow shape. Now, you don't have to worry about getting this precisely right at this stage. Um, you just want it to get as good enough as you can. Later on, uh, we're going to look at another approach of using joint angles as drivers for morph targets so that you can actually have a sculpted shape for any part of your character driven by the angle of a given joint. So that's going to help us a lot uh, to have more artistic control over parts of your character. Right now I just want to see things moving in, moving a lot better over there. Let's check our forearm twist. The forearm twist looks pretty good as it is. So I think that does it for the arm of the character. As I said, let's not worry too much about um, about this yet. Actually, uh, we're looking a little bit of uh, volume loss for the shoulder. So we can check that out really quickly by selecting these vertices right here which are the uh, top of the shoulder there you go those six vertices make up the top of the shoulder so let's make sure they are really weighted towards this joint that's much much better in terms of volume preservation I'm not really a concerned right now about the actual shape. Let's uh, turn off overlay drawing and let's do this the same for uh, the uh, the uh, joining vertices right here. Let's get those guys up to more or less like that. That's a lot better. And uh, let's do these two a little bit. and these guys too. Sometimes this takes a little bit of tweaking like that. Now these guys I don't want to push too much because as you can see the rotation is pushing them forward instead of upwards. So let's just uh, leave them where they look fine and let's just look at the back of the character uh, and maybe take these two guys and also bring them up. And that's a much better shoulder shape. Now let's compare that against the, our twisting um, arm. Yeah, that, that's 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 good. Uh, I think that all it's uh, all that's left is I'm gonna check a little bit the weights on these loops against uh, the joints that are twisting just to see if I'm running into volume loss right there. So just to not make things longer than they are for you right now, I can skip the uh, video or actually I'll do one so you can see what I'm going to be doing and I'll do the other one uh, separately. So let's again, let's select this joint instead and the mesh and let's see what we have for this uh, loop right here and the uh, this one over here let's see let's adjust the weights on this one so it goes to 100% which is better and let's take this loop over here and adjust the weights as you can see if I reduce the weights for this joint that loops takes on more the shape of the next deformer So you can use that to control how things are twisting. Let's now take this loop and maybe make it a lot closer to this deformer. Ah, oh, yeah, that, that 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 really improved things right there. And if I take this, that's not precisely a loop. 
I'm going to have to get rid of the uh, extra edges. I'm just going to select here the ones that go under the uh, forearm. And now I can get rid of these guys. Okay. And let's see what happens if I move this one around. That also appears to improve things. Not too much though. There you go. That's better. And I think I'm going to grab these two vertices and smooth those out. That looks a lot better. Also this one. Yeah. Okay. That looks a lot better. So now I'm going to grab this deformer deselect this one well since we're here let's just keep keep going at this let's select this loop and adjust the weights really has to be 100 percent this one let's adjust the weights to a little bit less i think this guy can be 100 percent too Look at this guy. Not so much. Here we need to see a little bit of influence from the uh, the next joint at the elbow. So that looks just fine. And let's see what we do about this guy. Yeah, a little bit less influence on this previous loop for this joint. And that looks just okay. So there, this looks like a pretty decent arm for our character. Still, of course, it needs more work, especially in this area. Shoulders are one of the most difficult areas to get right when, uh, when skinning. So we're going to do a lot of work over here. And of course, I'm not considering that the clavicle hasn't moved yet because uh, you would never see a, a character do this. When he brings his arm up, the clavicle would also rotate up, so you get a lot less of this crease right there. So we still need to look at the clavicle area once we get to the torso, which I'm going to leave for last. Um, and then we'll see. We're going to integrate some systems to get some muscle movement here and, uh, in the, and some bone movement in the scapula area. So let's just keep going and uh, keep uh, working on our character till we get him a lot better and we finish the deformations for the entire torso. See you in the next video.